Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship with the Congregational Church on Mercer Island. Really glad that you're able to join us this morning. Um, as a reminder to you, if you can move your mouse around until you see a choice between speaker view and gallery view, you want speaker view while the service is going on. We'll all switch to gallery view at the end so that we can see each other, but speaker view is good for uh, being able to read the hymn words and so forth. Um, and as you look at the faces in worship this morning, especially if you're a visitor, just a, uh, a word of assurance, you might see some people wearing funny hats today. Um, this is kind of a quirky tradition in our church on Mother's Day uh, in memory of a, a member who's no longer with us who always wore a lovely hat to church on Sundays. It's been Hat Sunday on Mother's Day in honor of Patty Gerard, uh, but we don't normally do that. There's a mighty undercurrent running through our world. Call it grace, call it hope, call it holiness, call it life. Sometimes it's right out there so you can't miss it. Like in some of the sunsets we've had this last week, the, the thunderstorm, the exuberance of trees showing off their brand new leaves, or like the feeling of climbing a mountain, building something with your hands, exercising your political muscle to change the world. Or like in those wonderful photos of mothers and offspring, and to all of you who were the, the mothers in those photos, happy Mother's Day. But we celebrate something bigger than simple family today. Life is amazing. Our planet home is awesome. And we are called into mystery and discovery, wonder and joy. Let's sing it together. Let's pray together. O oh God, call us into mystery. These are hard times for those of us who like to control things. We have an unquenchable need to understand, especially when we feel out of control. Like little children with their mothers, we ask, why? Why this? Why that? You are silent. Right now, there are more questions than answers. But we sense the compassion in your eyes. We sense your endless patience. We sense your mother's heart wanting to make things better. 
Help us to be patient too in the face of everything we don't know. Help us to trust you for what is going to happen next. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again this week, someone from the other side of the world has reached out to greet us and share his story with us. This is Heratian Rohala Riso, who is the pastor of a church in Madagascar. Um, let's watch his greeting together. Hi everyone. My name is Heritian. I am from Madagascar. I live in Antananarivo, which is the capital of Madagascar. I would like to say hello and uh, happy Easter to all of the members of uh, CCMI. And also, I would like to pray that all of you are in God's hands and uh, out of danger from this uh, pandemic. I'd like also to uh, share how life and how was the Easter during the uh, lockdown. Uh, it was quite uh, different and unusual because uh, Usually we used to celebrate uh, Easter at church with uh, a lot of people, like uh, 2,000 people worship together. But uh, this time it was very special because it is only few of us, me, my wife, my daughter and my son were worship together at uh, home uh, watching the TV because uh, the uh, Federation of the Church in Madagascar were uh, worshiping together and directing it from TV so uh, many people can follow the uh, service on TV and uh, it was uh, very very good for us because it's it's like uh, 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 all Christians is joined together to worship but uh, of course it was on TV and uh, we we love it it's uh, very exchanging also we I would like to share how was uh, life in lockdown. It was quite difficult because uh, you have to stay at home and uh, to think about uh, something like uh, when you saw the news on TV from abroad and uh, and so a lot of people was uh, affected by the virus and uh, also uh, many people was dead and uh, you thought like uh, if it will be arrived in Madagascar how will how will life because uh, we are a very poor country and a lot of people are uh, in the street, no home, homeless people uh, or uh, jobless people and a lot of vulnerable people in Madagascar and uh, when you think about that, it's very difficult. And uh, But the government says that uh, since the virus was reached in Madagascar, up to now it uh, it is uh, 121 was uh, confirmed cases and uh, in the hospital but uh, up to today they say that uh, 61 of them was cured and uh, out from hospital so that is uh, quite uh, 
uh, nice for us. Uh, and uh, the government also decided to reopen partially uh, the lockdown and uh, people can go to work from uh, uh, morning up to 12. And uh, we hope that uh, it will be getting better and better. But uh, church are still uh, closed up to now. Uh, I think uh, that's all. So uh, be blessed and uh, stay safe. Bye bye. Those greetings were filmed about three weeks ago now. Um, I looked up the latest news from Madagascar. Hertian said they had 121 cases at that time. The number is now 193 confirmed cases of COVID, but not a single death, which is very difficult to believe. Um, Madagascar has been in the news because the president has been promoting uh, an herbal tonic, giving it out to the school children and all. Scientists and other places are condemning this as dangerous because A, it won't work, and B, it will lull people into a false sense of security. But I feel sympathy for that president when I read that they've got six ventilators in their country for a population of 27 million. It would not be a good place for people to panic. I'm finding these videos just so rich and, and wonderful, um, reaching hands reaching across the world. It would be great to have more. We've got a few more to show, but if you do know anyone in another country who might be willing just to turn on their, their smartphone and talk to us, tell us uh, how things are going, where they are, what, what stories they have to tell, that would be wonderful if you could let me know. Um, and with that little request and reminder, Let's all uh, share greetings with one another. Please type something into the chat box to say hello, to wish one another the peace of Christ. We have special music today. Julie Faye's son, Francis, who's a senior majoring in music at Wazoo, has recorded some music for us. Thank you, Francis. And I wish Christ's peace to all of you. Also, if there are any children to be found, see if you can round them up now.
the red and the green, and then William painted this part, and then Emily's feet. Emily, your feet were that big. So that could easily fit in Grandpa's hands. Oh, shh. We're not, we're not muted anymore. Oh, shh. Don't touch. Please don't touch my computer. Oh, wait. Hold on. What's going on? Why can't I hear Roberta? She's on mute. Me. I didn't un un unmute myself, so no wonder you couldn't hear me. I was saying hello, and nobody was saying anything. Hi. 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 What kind of week have you guys had? What kind of week have we had? A good week. A yeah. good week. William, did you have a good week? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. William. Also, a video game this week. week. Too. Mommy. Please look. Mama. Look, Mama. look, she's talking to you. Yeah. William had his tonsils out, huh? Is he doing okay? Yeah, I think yeah. doing just fine. Okay, that's really good news. I've been thinking about you guys a lot. I've been thinking about him and I've been thinking about you too. Um, and today is Mother's Day. Are you guys going to do anything special? Have you got any plans for Mother's Day? Sorry? Any plans for Mother's well, Day? Well, Michael made the kids sign a contract that says they're not going to fight today Mommy, and that they're going to listen. Mama, yeah. Mommy, yeah. Mama. Okay. Okay. Shh. Did you sign that, Emily? Did you sign it, the contract? Did you sign the contract? I think she signed it. That's okay, too. Ow. Ow. Oh. Well, Mama. that was a really good idea, Michael. I bet your mom's really going to appreciate that. I had another question for you, but it may be, I don't know, is this a good time for questions? Mommy. Because what I hear, Emily, I have a question for you if you've got a moment. I was wondering if we can think of 10 really nice things that your parents did for you this week, your mom or your dad. You think we can? Sorry, Sorry you cut out, Roberta. Oh, did I? Yeah. Okay. I was wondering whether you can think of 10 really nice things, you guys. Can you think of 10 things that your parents did that were really great this week for you? <laughs> Can you think of one nice thing we did? <laughs> I was wondering if they fed you. Did you have any food this week? Did I give you food? <laughs> All right. Okay. Did anybody tell any stories? Yeah. Did anybody read any stories? Yeah. What did we read? Harry Potter. And the Half-Blood Prince. Harry Sorry. Potter? No kidding. That's great. And I heard that, that you guys did something great yesterday. Want to tell we everybody? We went out, out to the boat. We went out in the boat on the lake. That sounds like mm -hmm. the perfect thing to do on a hot day. Anything yeah. else you can think of? We're only up to three. Oh, uh, yeah. What's that? A lot of video game time. Yeah, videos. I was wondering. I think video might be on the list. How about hugs? Have you got any hugs on your list? Yeah. Yeah. How about? I heard that you were planting seeds in a garden. You were doing stuff out there. Is anything growing? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think growing, but a lot of things dying. Are they, it's pretty hot out there. You have to give them a drink, but then not too much, right? Yeah. I've got one on one side hitting me from there. And, and how about when you're bored? Do your mom and your dad help you think of things to do? Yeah. See, I'm thinking of everything. How about when your brother or your sister is bugging you? Do your mom and your dad fix that ever? Dad will either take tickets or have them do a timeout. Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. And did anybody kiss you goodnight this week? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's great. The last thing on my list was popsicles, because I was hoping everybody would get some. Did that happen? Yeah, we got a lot. Oh, this is good. OK. How about DVDs? <laughs> I don't think they know what DVDs are. No, I know what DVDs are. It's just we haven't listened to one until a very long time. The last DVD I listened, uh, I watched was either Eyes in Disguise or Avatar? All right. All right. Avatar and all. I've never seen that. Right. Well, there's all sorts of things your parents do for you that are great during the day. 
and you can see all the different ways that they love you. Today's a great day for saying thanks for all those things, right? There's one thing you can't see. Hey, there's William. I see him. <laughs> He's in his underwear. <laughs> yeah, he is, isn't he? There's one thing your parents do for you that you can't necessarily see. Maybe they say a prayer with you when you go to bed, but you know what? They pray for you after you go to sleep too. I guarantee it that your parents are praying that you'll be happy and you'll be healthy and everything will be good for you and that they will know all the right things to do being your mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best things and you don't even know, but I wanted to tell you that because We've been praying for you, too, in our church. We've been praying for you guys this week, thinking about William's operation, thinking about what that would mean to everybody. I prayed that you would be safe, and I prayed that the doctors would do a really good job. And I prayed that this would be a good week for all of you, right? And I was thinking that it would be great if you guys could pray for us sometimes, too. Would you be up for that once yeah. in a while? Yeah? Want to try it? We pray together right now just to give it a try? Okay. Is that all right? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for our church family. We thank you for all the people caring for each other in so many different ways. Um, we're all in our houses right now and we can't see each other, but you can see us, God. So we thank you for this family and we pray that you would send your love to everybody and help them to be brave and to be safe and to be joyful. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Michael. You you hang in there. We have a beautiful song to listen to now. This is April, Come She Will, and Jeff Church is going to sing for us. Great to see you guys. this morning. The first is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen the Father, whoever has seen me, has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So if in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. Our second reading is a reflection by poet Steve Garness Holmes on these words that so many of us have found challenging. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is not a treasure map for conversion, not a filter to screen out unbelievers, no one-way directions to some secret entrance to the favor of God. Jesus speaks not to unbelievers, but to us who already believe. We want to know the way. There is no way, Jesus says. No set of instructions, no formula, no thing you do to get to God. He says, I am the way, me, not beliefs in me, but me, myself. We don't come to God on Jesus' coattails, behind him or beside him, but through him, inside him. Be Jesus. Be God's self-giving love embodied in the world. That's how you come to God. Be God's love for you, yes, yourself, which becomes God's love for the world. Get right inside that love. Move through it. We don't get close to God by our beliefs, even our righteous obedience. We get close through love. Love is the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to God except through love. That was my mom. Thank you, mom. Happy Mother's Day. A few of us in our congregation are working longer hours with more intensity and pressure than any time in their lives. But for most of us, life is more spacious right now. I look back at my calendar from this time last year and it's, it's shocking. Hurtling from one meeting to another. Um, lucky if I could be home for dinner more than two nights a week. Putting in the miles and the hours. Um, encountering more people in a day than I encounter in a couple of weeks now. Keeping dozens of conversations in my head. Generating tons of work for the church council. I always like to do that. Reading books, writing sermons. Whatever else this virus has done for us, it has removed us from what's normal into a new place where we can look back and consider those lives we chose, or maybe it was what necessity made of us. Perspective, huh? I hope that's true even for those of you who are crazy busy with deadlines and demands, because the world is different around all of us. I feel wiser. Not that I know the answers to any of the questions our leaders are busy debating, but somehow about what it means to be human. It feels good, like connecting with my inner mother, like connecting with Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe in me. You know the way. What? You don't know the way? I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. 
Wisdom isn't the same as answers. Wisdom is about knowing which way to go, having a compass to navigate by. What would Jesus do? He never had to contend with internet failure or fake news on TV or empty shelves where the hand sanitizer ought to be. But you only have to live with him for a while before somehow you just start knowing. I in the Father, he would say, and you in me, so that we really do follow in the things he did and maybe greater things as well if we take him at his word. Today I want to name some features of the way that I'm seeing. If I miss any that you think are significant, do put them in the chat box for everybody to read. But you'll agree with me on the first one, the big one, um, which is love. Love matters more than anything else. And don't we know that now in a different way from a couple of months ago? How love matters more than winning, more than making packs of money, uh, more than climbing to the top of the pile more than seeing the world, more uh, love is patient and kind. It doesn't insist on its own way. It isn't irritable. It doesn't keep score of what's wrong in the other person. It celebrates what's right. There's a kind of letting go in it. We aren't here to fix each other. We're here to love each other, warts and all see it in the faces and all those photos that you sent for that wonderful opening to our service this morning. So much forgiveness and acceptance, so much appreciation, so much humanity. At the end of our lives, when we look back, nothing else will matter as much as who we've been with the people God has given us to love. We all know that, but we forget. Maybe right now when we can't go shopping or otherwise indulge our craving for all the distractions that used to fill our calendars, we remember there is a wisdom in it to redirect our priorities, hopefully from now on for the rest of our lives. One author really captured it for me this week. I used to trade goodbyes for on-time morning departures, she writes loving goodbyes. I used to trade loving goodbyes for on-time morning departures. I used to trade vacation days for getting tasks accomplished. I used to trade peace for pride. I used to trade cuddling for career advancement. No more. I'm not trading a conversation with my daughter for a mindless scroll on Instagram. I'm not trading real human connection for shallow online friendships. I'm not trading likes for real love. Love is the first thing. But next, right behind it, comes gratitude. Life is packed full of gifts, and it's crazy to be too busy or too important to appreciate them. Last year at this time, I was far too busy to go for walks. Now I wouldn't miss them springtime out there. The last of the daffodils were still in bloom when Governor Inslee told us all to stay home. Then it was the tulips, then the dandelions, then the azaleas, wow, and then the dogwood. Now any day the peonies. What a crime not to notice. Not to mention the chalk drawings on the sidewalks or the signs um, somebody put up in our neighborhood. It says this is the funny walk zone when you're walking past our house or the new tricks the neighbor kid has learned how to do on his skateboard. That author again, her name is Rachel Macy Stafford. I am not trading a walk in the sunshine for stacks of folded laundry. I'm not trading breathtaking sunsets for stellar stats. And how about this one? I'm not trading a scoop of chocolate chip ice cream for a number on the scale. Our souls are insisting that if there's something in life that wants to be savored right now, our job is to savor it. The rest can wait. Why have we sacrificed so much joy for the last umpteen years? What were we thinking? And one last point, much the same, about being human. I used to trade authenticity for approval, Stafford says. 
I used to trade my sanity for rapid text message responses. I used to trade my family's emotional well-being for carrying out a well-orchestrated plan. I used to trade joy for control, happiness for perfection. No more. I'm not trading sound mental health for an empty inbox. I'm not trading tranquility for 24-7 avail availability. I'm not trading family closeness for anything. Several of us have commented these last few weeks that our souls have gotten really uppity. They just say no sometimes. We're used to self-discipline, uh, delivering, organizing everything, holding ourselves to standards, working beyond our limits as though we could prove that we didn't really have any limits. But right now, somehow our bodies and spirits are just saying no, cut it out, just stop. So if you come to the Tuesday night book group, don't expect a presentation on chapter two or a neat set of questions that are going to keep us all on track for the allocated time. We're a bunch of fellow seekers reading a book together, sharing how we've reacted to it and um, Whatever we say, wherever that discussion goes, is where it's meant to go. No overachievers serving as conversation police. Just incredibly fascinating people with rich life stories, getting to know each other, to tell some of those stories, tease out some questions. Jesus said all of this another way. What does it profit a person to gain the whole world if they lose their soul? We've heard that a hundred times, right? Look at what it took to make us listen. Just for the record, since it's Mother's Day, this is what family at its best can do for us. The rest of the world will always be panicking and pushing us. If it can squeeze any more out of us, it will. But as parents, as partners, as friends, as spiritual friends in the church, we can offer each other a better way. Who you are right now is enough. There's nothing to prove. You were made for joy and you don't have to be perfect to find it. And while love will cost you everything you are, that doesn't mean sacrificing your humanity. It means sharing it. Whether that's in scooping out the chocolate chip ice cream or taking up a cross. Too many of us have been carrying crosses around for the wrong reasons. Another witness, if I speak in the tongues of mortals or of angels, but do not have love, I am nothing more than a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body to death, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Heard that before? The first thing is to be rooted in love. When you are rooted in love, you know what you have to do. And everybody around you is blessed by it. Believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, Jesus says. But if you don't, then believe me because of the works themselves. So watch him for a while. Watch how he's always ready to stop as though the people interrupting him were more important than anything he thought might happen that day. Watch him ask for a cup of cold water and change somebody's life. Watch him breaking bread just for the joy of sharing it. I have come that you might have life, he said, and have it abundantly. Maybe, finally, we can hear what he meant. Amen. Let's gather all of this into prayer. Um, for the last several weeks, we've accompanied our prayers with images of the events of the week to help stretch our thoughts to people in situations beyond our own immediate circle. Today, if the screen sharing will cooperate, I've got two slides because of some really significant anniversaries that we've marked this week. 
felt right to note these uh, events. They had such an impact on our country and on our world. Um, to note them as we come to prayer so that we can thank God for the courage and the boldness and the faith that's seen us through. So let me just go through quickly. It was 85 years ago this week that President Roosevelt signed the executive order establishing the WPA, the Works Progress Administration, gambling everything to try and pull the country out of the Great Depression. What an incredible story that is. 75 years, the big one, VE Day, 75 years ago, Friday, Germany's surrender bringing World War II to a close in Europe. It was 60 years ago this week that the FDA approved the pill, ushering in a contraception revolution. 50 years ago was the shootings at Kent State as students protested against the Vietnam War. We've never looked at war the same way. And 40 years ago, um, the World Health Organization declared that smallpox had been eradicated from the globe. And then to tag on just for what it's worth, 20 years ago this week, um, Vladimir Putin was sworn in as president of Russia. We're making history right now to um, lots of things that are happening will make their way into the history books. You will recognize these stories if you've watched the news. But you will also know of people in situations outside the headlines who need our prayers today. So let's all take a few minutes to remember and share our prayer requests in the chat box. Let's pray together. God of earth and sky, oceans and streams, plants and creatures, you created a world without borders, a garden of abundance and diversity, destined to become a city whose river flows clear as crystal, and where the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. 
today, may the remembrance of this gift and the promise of this vision startle us from the narrow preoccupations of our confinement to see our world anew with all its promise and pain, its gifts and its need, and thereby evoke in us gratitude and compassion. We thank you for our families and everyone whose care supports us right now. On this Mother's Day, we pray for parents at home with their children, homeschooling, coping with all the stresses and strains of growing children confined to small spaces, maybe having to work from home as well. And we pray for parents who have no choice but to go out to the jobs that feed their families, facing impossible choices in impossible times. We pray for people missing their mothers today as we are separated from each other and forbidden to gather. And especially we pray for those who have lost their mothers. Bless them in their grief and their gratitude. We pray for the people of Madagascar, so vulnerable in the face of the virus that's sweeping the world. Thank you for the courage and compassion of their pastors. Thank you for their resilience as a people. Hold them as your own through all that lies ahead. Hold all of suffering and anxious humanity in your loving care. And we pray for ourselves as we participate in the making of history right now. Those anniversaries haunt us, the end of a huge war, the challenges of a devastating depression, the struggles over Vietnam that so divided us and so compromised us as a country, the advances of science and medicine so hopeful. We pray for wise leadership marked by the selflessness we saw in Jesus, who washed his disciples' feet, who fed multitudes, who ate at table with the outcast while overturning the tables of oppression, who healed the bereft, blessed the peacemakers, and proclaimed the coming of the new creation, where faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. His way is our hope. It is our commitment. It is our best humanity. So this is our prayer. By your grace, may it be so. For we pray in his name, and as he taught us, so we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen.
Just a few announcements quickly before I turn you all loose uh, and unmute you. We'll be in breakout rooms as before. Um, and I'm curious about one thing. If you could let me know whether Zoom always puts you into the same group with the same people or whether it's mixing you up, because it would be good for us all to have a chance to see everybody over the weeks and, and have, a, have a chance to talk. Once again, I want to thank our valiant musicians and thanks especially to Bill Mon, who's put in very long hours this week on the film clips we've enjoyed. Thank you, everybody who shared photographs of yourselves and your families for our, our prelude. Um, that video collection will be available on the church website. Watch in the Tuesday email for the link on how to find it. It's really worth watching again. And gentlemen, you're on notice. It'd be great to do a similar thing for Father's Day. So I'd love photos from everybody, a picture of you with your father, um, you as an adult with your father is what I'm looking for, and you who are dads, photos of yourself with your kids. That would be fantastic. The events for the week are on the slide here. Details will be in the, in the weekly email together with all the links so that you can join us on Zoom. But I want to call special attention to Tuesday night, our book group. We're reading a book by Bill Grace called Longing for a New Story. Um, there's a slide for that one too, if it will change there. And as I said in the sermon, um, this is not an intense study sort of experience. We are looking to this book to um, really to inspire our own reflections about uh, the, the situation we're living through and the spirituality that is called for if we are to be um, if we are to be channels for the new world that we pray God is bringing to birth through everything that's happened. And finally, a word of thanks. Um, look at the money that we raised for these good causes we've been promoting over the last uh, several weeks now. Stan put in the chat box about $2,800 for the Highline Schools Foundation. In fact, the final number was 2850 and those, the $900 for the Sophia Way was um, sent in on Wednesday so that it was doubled. It was matched in their, their matching fund appeal through Give Big. $600 as well for Mercer Island Youth and Family Services who are really needing it right now. So thank you everybody for your generosity. Um, love feels good, doesn't it? And thank you for all your love for our church. Thank you for your support which it makes it possible for our ministries to continue. So time for gallery view. If you want to find the switch, um, everybody switch so you can see everyone and help me with this. Blah, I see some hats. Very good. Um, let's share in blessing together. The way of Jesus means being light in the darkness. The way of Jesus means following love as our deepest truth. The way of Jesus means believing that life is stronger than death. The way of Jesus means watching evil tremble, knowing it has met its match. The way of Jesus means forgiveness flowing freely into every corner of our lives and through us as a blessing to others. So enjoy it, live it, and may the God of risen life be with you, not only now, but tonight, tomorrow, whenever you need it most. May God be with you for Easter gladness and power today and forever. Amen. How about a wave? I love it. And maybe you need a moment to use that little arrow in the corner of the screen to see who else is here waving to you. Wave some more. Yeah, it's great to see you all. I'll push the button now and, and divide us up into breakout rooms. I think. There it is. And see you soon. I'll drop in on the rooms and say hi. Tanner? How do you spell that? 
C-A-N-N-E-R. Hi, Roberta. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Roberta. I think it's a different group every time. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah good. I mean, it's some of the same faces, but yeah, not always. Sort of overlap. Yeah. There's yeah, some overlap and too, some but... new ones, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's better. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron, sorry to hear about your aunt. Yeah, yeah. She uh, she was 94, almost 95, and uh, uh, was greatly loved down in Portland, Oregon. She was the matriarch of my one, one, one arm of the family down there. And, uh, and uh, she, yeah, she passed, I guess, of, of, of lung cancer? Uh, a couple mornings ago, although that was not anything anybody knew about. I, huh. I mean, I think, but uh, she, she, she was well loved, and uh, and so we'll probably be talking about her and sharing memories today. When yeah. I'm, we're going to drive down and uh, uh, have a social distancing barbecue in mom and dad's bar uh, backyard um, <laughs> today, Good. and uh, keep some space, but see each other. Yeah. So it'll be good. Sounds like sounds like good food too. That's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ordered takeout barbecue. Oh, <laughs> Just okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she was she was great. She was like my new Italian New Yorker, um, uh, with I, I I remember memories of of a little like Fabergé egg that she used to make. She really loved her glamour and her costume jewelry, and you know, sort of had a heightened sense of glamour even though she was a pretty humble lady really <laughs> very cool so and great laughter great laugh and everybody if you haven't had a chance to meet my friend cindy cindy and i were from in kindergarten together we've been friends wow. our whole lives wow so she lives in orange county um, but it's really fantastic that she can worship with us she's been with yeah. us i think every sunday every sunday great. she has hi yeah. cindy nice to have you join Thank us you. Great to be here. I'm really enjoying the services. Yes, good. I am so too. To see you. I love seeing uh, your mom this morning, Roberta. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. We you may have to job. have, when we're all able to be in the same room together again, we'll have to like install some sort of video monitor and keep keep zooming, combine zoom. <laughs> no, and, that's and not a bad zoom. idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that people write, who can just write to Mr. In. Zoom and, and suggest that. <laughs> We'll have to get like the thought. mega churches do. Well, yeah, it's make kind them of funny. live. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's funny how mega churches and televangelists for me are not the sort of church experience I'm looking for, but they've got some media technology and some <laughs> skills that I'm like, well, maybe we could use some of that. <laughs> it's yeah. like how it's like the content's different, so that's what that's what's different. Elta, oh, you're muted, Elta. How did that happen? Oh, there. Okay. And genius, genius also muted. Okay. okay, I'm going to have to leave the. You're um, muted. Because uh, I have a obligation to be in my daughter's casual. You're still muted. Sure. Okay. You're still muted, genius. Elta saying goodbye. Very quiet. All right. Happy Mother's Hi. Day, Happy Elta. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. I'm going to leave you too. I'm going to join another group while Janie is looking for. Okay. Good to see you, Roberta. So it will be fun when I when I I'm supposed to be getting a miraculous phone calls. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. So we'll see. We'll see. Great. Great. <laughs> yeah, we get to see ours today in person at two o'clock. Oh, good. Oh, really? Everybody right. can come over. Oh, nice. We're, we're gonna go out to her, out to my sister's house. She lives uh, um, on the, on the river in North Bend, so we can sit outside around the river. It'd be nice and nice people be nice and well oh. you kind of keep keep our distance yeah. but gosh it's so hard when you see your kids you want to hug them <laughs> and i probably yeah. will so <laughs> yeah we can't even bump elbows anymore can we because it's too close yeah. I know, that's <laughs> right. yeah. are you able to get to your mom's or not are you is she in your circle she's yeah she's down in lacy i wasn't, right. i wasn't planning to go yeah, we've yeah, been, yeah. We've, we've been zooming. We have we haven't gone to to Lacey either. That's where our daughter is, well, Tumwater. But yeah, uh, yeah, that's outside our sphere. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Maybe we should send Jean over to say hi to my mom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'd get on like a house on fire. They'd be they great. would. They would. Uh huh. Yeah.
Lori, you're muted, but it's great to see you here. Could you hear us today? How do we unmute Lori? Unmute. See if I can do that. She's still there? Unmute. Can I do it? Yes, Lori, you can talk to us. Lori? <laughs> no, maybe the microphone isn't working. Oh, That's too bad. Maybe that was why she had herself on That's mute. Too bad. Maybe it is. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Well, she yeah. can hear us. So. Yeah. Good Hi, Lori. Good Hi, to Lori. see you, Lori. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you, Lori. <laughs> Say your name. And hugs to Evelyn. I miss hearing you sing. Yes. Oh, I'm, I miss singing, but I'm not sure when we'll ever be able to sing together. I know. It's really scary. Yeah. I was going to say, everybody absolutely should sing along with the hymns. And if you feel stupid, I don't care, because it would be terrible if our voices atrophied. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mine already <laughs> has. <laughs> No excuses. Everyone can sing. That's right. Uh, yeah. uh, your voice awesome. sounds lower, Evelyn. You've got to work on those high notes, maybe. Oh, well, we, we, we won't discuss. No working on uh, too many. I have two immunocompromised people with very sensitive hearing. What, there is no singing going on in the house. I see. Uh, so it yeah. uh, does not work. <laughs> too bad every house doesn't come with a soundproof room because we can all use it. Yeah. Yes, it would be nice, but no. But no. I have, as I said, two, two people with highly sensitive searing, hearing, smelling, tasting right now in the house. It's not a good place for uh, any extraneous stuff going on. Yeah, I still hear that. It's it's good to be grateful for taste and smell and all that. When so many people right now have lost it, that's one of the. Can you oh yeah. <laughs> being able to taste again for the rest of your life. What a cruel thing this virus is. On that happy <laughs> note, I'm going to go see what group three is up to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, have a good week, everybody. Thank you for the Roberta. service today, Roberta. It was You're great. Yeah. It was great. Thank you. Lo loved the prayer when you when you connected to the history and the present. I think that's wonderful. Oh, Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. John, are you, um, you're a singer, but are the other Rotarians 